Hey traders, this is Jake from Optimus Futures, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to use TrendSpider strategy development tools to create automated trading strategies without any code required. Now, this will be focusing on TrendSpider strategy builder tool, and it has a really intuitive drag and drop interface that, in my opinion, makes automated trading easier than ever. There's no coding required. There's some simple conditions that we just need to configure for ourselves, and this is all directly done through TrendSpider. It can even integrate with web hook hooks for trade automation with your live trading account. We'll get into that in a separate video. This video will just be focusing on how to actually configure these strategies. So to start, you'll want to navigate to the top right hand of your corner, uh, corner of the software and go to strategy tester. When you click on this button, it'll turn green and activate a new window below your chart on the bottom half of your screen. Uh, all dedicated for the uh, strategy tester. Now, just to preface this, at the top here, this is where you choose the name for your strategy. This is just an automated pre-built name that the software chose for us. From there, you can choose your chart type that it's based on. Then you can choose the time frame of your chart uh, and how the strategy tester will automate any trades. Uh, it'll be based on this time frame. You can choose extended hours, so the overnight session. You can choose how much data is being pulled in um, to backtest this strategy. For example, it's set to chart right now by default, so that'll only pull in data that's showing on uh, that's aggregated on your chart. But you can pull in a thousand candles, two thousand candles, three thousand. You'll see in our example here shortly, it'll use five thousand. Then you could choose how it's actually traded, so whether it's on the open high low or close of the next candle and then whether you want long or short only positions on the left hand side of our screen these are our entry conditions as you can see on our right hand side of the screen this is our exit conditions so how we exit the trade now just to keep things simple to start i'm going to just do uh, one of the sample built-in strategies that uh, trendspider gives as a built-in example so we'll go over that first and then we'll get rid of that and show you how to make your own. All right, so we're gonna start off with this basic 30 minute EMA crossover strategy as an example, just to get some ground rules and see how it should be set up. So like I mentioned, now that we selected this, here's the name of the strategy. Again, you can customize this. Here's the chart type, the time frame. In this example, extended overnight hours are disabled. As I mentioned, this one will be using a 5,000 candle aggregation to backtest data. You can customize this if needed though. It's set to open or trade by the next open and it's gonna be long only positions. On our left-hand side of the screen, these are where we can view our entry conditions. So again, this is an EMA crossover strategy. In this example, you can see that it's set to a 13 EMA that when crossed over a 26 EMA will trigger our condition and place a trade. Now, just to let you know, you can customize these parameters here. You can left click once they've been entered and change the length, the offset or the price source of your condition. In this case, it's our EMA. You can do the same thing for the next condition or you can also change how it triggers. So for example, and like I mentioned, this is set to trigger when it's crossed up over the 26 EMA. If you wanted it to be greater than a 26 EMA, less than a 26 EMA, increase, decrease, crossed up, down, price is touched, any of these conditions you can set here, just simply click on it and that condition will be set. Ours was originally set to crossed up since I did that now, I need to re-add indicators to this field. So we're going to be doing that in a second. I'm just going to leave this as a default for right now and focus on this exit condition. So you can see it's basically the same thing just on the exit side. The only difference here is this is crossed down instead of crossed up. So once our 13 30 minute EMA crosses down over the 26 30 minute EMA, it'll trigger our exit condition. Now you can see here, one thing that's actually different about our exit strategy is that there's a stop market order in place. And you can see the sample actually has 
that if it loses more than 1.5% on that trade, the stop market order will trigger. So this will automatically place the stop market order as a stop loss with the original trade and have that set there as a conditional field. Now, just to show you what this looks like once you've perfected and created your strategy, you can actually go ahead and choose to run it. So if we click run this green button above our strategy tester here, if we give it a second here, it'll take all the data, compile it, backtest it, and then show you where your strategy, when crossed over, will actually entry and exit. So you can see here, it plots the current chart we had open. This was a Coca-Cola company stock that was added to my chart. There's no rhyme or reason why I did either of these strategies or chose the simple, just using it for hypothetical demo purposes. But you can see in my demonstration here, all the entries and exits are plotted at their price and their exit price. So you can see what trades were done in a profit showing with the green exit or any trades that were done at a loss with a red exit. Again, these are all plotted directly on my chart. And this was done just by choosing run. Now, once I do this, you'll actually get a performance chart down at the bottom hand of your chart. It'll show you the mean change, control, different percentages, the number of winners or losers. You can see a performance chart versus the actual asset performance itself. You can see what market was analyzed, how much years of data were analyzed, the profits of trades, the number of winners, the number of losers, the expectancy, the risk to reward ratio. So there's quite a bit of valuable information that once you run your strategy, we'll spit out and give you. You can also click here. You can reset your back test results if you want to test it again with the different parameters, or you can even download these results as a CSV or TSV uh, to import in Excel and manage and modify that data, whether it be in a journal like the Optimus Futures Journal or another journal out there to monitor and um, maintain those results. All right. So now that we've gone over a sample code and showed you what it's supposed to look like, let's go ahead and create our own. So going back down to the bottom of the screen here, I've opened a new strategy tester window just to start from scratch and make sure everything is blank. First, what you want to do is click on new strategy in the bottom left. It'll go ahead and pre-populate some sort of random name. Go ahead and choose whatever name you want for yourself. And then like we showed you in those previous examples, choose your parameters up here. So choose your chart type, your chart aggregation, whether you want extended hours or not how much data is actually pulling in, how you want your trades to be triggered on the next candle, and whether you want long or short positions. From there, you'll want to add a script. Now, my already have one in here. One should populate for you by default. If you need more than one condition, you can click add script multiple times and add as many as you need. Once you have the scripts that you need, you can go ahead and click add a parameter. You have the option to load from a template. If you've done this before, you can choose a group, a condition group. So like an and or, or almost like an if then statement. So a multi-layer condition, if you will. Or in our case, we'll just choose a simple, just standard one condition. And from here, our one condition can either be based on price indicator, as we saw in our previous example candlestick pattern, earning or dividend dates, splits, or analyst estimates. Since we've already seen what indicator looks like, let's go ahead and set this one by price. From here, we can have it triggered based on the open, high, low, or close of the next price point. And then our condition. So whether it's equal, greater than, greater than or equal to, we can choose from here. So in my case, let's do greater than, since we'll be going long. And from here, then you can set your last condition. So this is either set by price, indicator, or constant value. Now for my testing so far, in my opinion, if you are setting this by price as your entry condition, to me, it actually makes the most sense to set this by a constant value. There may be cases where you want to set this by price again, but from what I've seen, constant value seems to be the most consistent. And the reason why is because you type in your price right here. So for in the example above, I was testing this previously 
and I chose to set this constant value to 4181. So this is essentially saying that anytime the open of a next candle is greater than a price of 4181, my entry condition will trigger. And again, if I need to make more conditions than that, I can add another script and do the and or statements. Uh, but for now, we'll just keep this simple. So we're doing a 30 minute chart where at the open of the next candle, if my value of 4181 is greater, I will have trades entry or trigger entry orders. Now, from here, as we saw in our last example, we need to add an exit strategy or an exit condition. So we can do the same thing. But as we did see in that other example, you can get a, get a bit more complex with this. And here are those other complex options. So in our previous example, there was only a stop loss added here. But if we want, we could also add a trailing stop. We can add a take profit order. We can add number of candles passed. We can add entry and validated, or we can add another script, which is what we'll be doing. The script is the same option we chose here. From here, we just need to add another parameter again, and we can do something simple again. We can do condition. Let's go by price again. This time, let's do it on the close of the next candle, and then we'll have it exit whenever it is greater than or equal to a constant value of 4191. So in this case, I basically only want my trades to exit if I have a 10 point profit or greater on the MES when my price reaches 4191 or above. So again, 10, that's a 10 point difference. Um, it'll only trigger those exit strategies if the price is greater than 4091. So again, from here, and like we saw in the other example, I can add a stop loss to this if I want. I can add a take profit if I need to. You know, for an exit strategy, it's really up to you how you see fit, how you want to organize this. Just keep in mind that stop losses or take profits are never guaranteed to get filled due to market conditions, but they do give you the option to choose here. So I'm satisfied with my conditions that I have set here. Let's go ahead and run this. I have everything set as I need to. I go ahead and click run. If there's any issues with my parameters here, it'll let me know beforehand and tell me what I'm missing or what went wrong. And now, as we can see here, there's quite a bit more than our previous example, but you can see all the different entries and exits of my strategy that I've set here. So again, you're only gonna be seeing those entries greater than um, 4181. You're only going to be seeing the exits if it's greater than or equal to 4191. So you can go back. You can see all the data I pulled here for the last 5,000 candles. There's quite a bit of information. If you want a bit more of an organized view, you can go down and look in the Price Behavior Explorer and see how this performed over time and how it changed over the number of candles. And then you can see the performance chart here. Like we already saw, it shows you what market it was for, how much data was actually analyzed. So actually those 5,000 candles was really worth four months of data. You can see my profits, my losses, my winners, my losers. Again, all this was random, hypothetical. I only did this merely as a technical guide to show you how you can do this yourself. There's no rhyme or reason as to why I chose these parameters. But that's gonna wrap it up for this video. This gave you a brief introduction of how to use the strategy tester within TrendSpider to create your own automated trading strategies with zero coding required. We hope this video helped. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section down below or visit our community forum. That's community.optimistfutures.com. We have a specific uh, forum topic just for TrendSpider. So if you do have anything that you need help with, go to our forum navigate to the TrendSpider subform and you'll be able to post any of your questions there. We hope this video helped and thanks for watching.